Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about graphs of linear functions, that is in section 2.2. So we're going to look at two ways to graph a linear function. Uh, the first way is to use the y-intercept and the slope that's given. So once you have, so the idea is that we can easily recognize what the y-intercept is. And then using the slope, we can attain the second point. And then from there, we can draw a line through those two points. Then the second way is using just the x and y intercept. So you have two points. And then once we plot those, they, you can just draw a line through those two points. And then we'll talk about uh, the conditions for parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, you can, so given, so given the slopes, right, you can tell whether those two lines are going to be parallel or perpendicular. And then we'll look at how to find the point of intersection of two lines. In other words, right, given two lines, um, if they intersect each other, how can we figure out that point of intersection? Okay. So let's start off with an example here on how to graph a linear function uh, using just the y-intercept and slope. Okay, so just to recall, okay, for a linear function, right, you have this form, y equals mx plus b. Uh, this is your y-intercept, right, zero comma b, okay, and this is your slope, the value in front of x, okay. All right, so we have, we have this function, okay, we know it's linear because it has this form, okay. All right, so we know that the slope is going to be minus three-fourths, and the y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. All right, so this is our slope. And this is our y-intercept. OK, so let's draw our Cartesian plane here. I think that'll work. Let's see, we'll make this a little straighter. Okay, that worked. All right, so the first thing is to plot, okay? First thing is to plot the y-intercept, okay? So let's do that. So the y-intercept, let's say that's, let's say we have one here, okay. two, three, so that's, Put our point there, so zero comma one, okay. And okay. All right. So right again. So this is our independent axis. These are dependent axis. So zero comma one. So zero x zero for x, and then for for y it's one. So we're here. Okay. Um, so the next thing is to use to use the slope to obtain the second point. Okay. And remember, the slope can be interpreted as rise over run. Okay, so rise over run. So we can interpret this value as three over minus four. Because usually, typically, when we think of rise, we think of it going up. So it's going up in the positive direction and then run. Okay, run is going to be either positive or negative, depending on sign. So if run is positive, it's going to go to the right. If run is negative, it's going to go to the left. So in this case, so this is the same as this. So we're going to go up three, right? So we start up here, we go up three, and then over four to the left. Okay. Up three, three units. And then over four units to the left. All right, so we're here, okay? So we're going to count up three. So one, two, so one, two, three. I think that puts us here. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this as four. This is one. So we go up three units, right? And then we're going to go over four units to the left. One, Two, three, four. All right. Okay, so that's going to put us here. OK, 
Okay, so minus four comma four is there, and then we have zero one. All right, so now what to do is connect them with some kind of straight edge, draw the ruler here. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. And there's a line. Okay. All right. And that's how you do it, right? Okay. So you basically figure out, right? uh, you figure out the y-intercept first, plot that point, okay, which is here. So zero comma one, and then you use the slope to obtain the second value. So writing it this way, we go up, three, and then over, right, over four units to the left. So that, this point right here, that is at minus four comma four. Okay. All right, so pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple idea, right? Okay. So the other way, the other way to plot a line is to use the x-intercept and y-intercept, okay? So let's do that over here. So let's say we want to graph this, right? Graph this function, right? one half x minus four, using only the x and y intercept. Okay, so let's first let's first go through and find the x and y intercept, and then we can uh, plot those on our Cartesian plot. All right, so, okay. all right, let's first figure out the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is where the graph, right, will, where the graph will cross the, the y-axis, okay? So to find the y-intercept, you basically let x equals zero, and then solve for y. Okay. So if we do that here, okay, then we're gonna end up getting, so we have y equals to one half times zero minus four. So this implies, right, this is going to give us zero and then negative four. So that means y equals negative four. Okay, so, right, so our input was zero, right, and our output is negative four. So we end up getting a coordinate. Okay? So the y intercept is going to be zero minus four. And if you think about it, all that is, is all that's doing is, oh, all you're doing in this case is just evaluating the function at zero, right? So zero being your input, and then your output is going to be negative four. All right. So that so we found the y-intercept. So now let's find the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, okay. So the x-intercept is where the where the function, right? Uh, in this case, our line is going to intersect the x-axis. So this time we want to let y be zero and then solve for x. So we, okay, so we let y be equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, all right. So doing that here, we're gonna have one half x 
minus four equals zero. So this is gonna give us one half X equals the four. Okay. And we can divide both sides by one half or multiply both sides by two. And we end up getting X equals two eight. Okay. That means our X intercept going to be eight comma zero. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and plot these two points. All right, do that here. Okay, so first, right, we have the y-intercept, so that's at zero, negative four. So that's gonna be down here, so negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. And the other one's gonna be at eight comma zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's your y-intercept, zero, negative four, and your x-intercept is eight comma zero. So you just need to use a straight hedge to connect those two points. There it is. Okay. That's our line. Okay. So again, we have our corner here, right? That's our y intercept, zero, negative four. And we have our x intercept, eight, comma, zero. Okay. So, pretty, pretty, this is also pretty, you know, simple idea. Okay. Again, just need to solve for the x and y intercept, okay? And again, the way you do that, for, and that's true. This, this, right? This process is true for any um, for any function, right? In terms of finding the x and y intercept, right? So to find the y intercept, no matter what the function is, you let x, you let your, you let the x be zero, and then you solve for y, okay? And again, this is assuming that x is the independent variable, okay? So you let x be zero, then solve for y. To find the x intercept, you let uh, you let x be zero, or sorry, you let, sorry, you let y be zero and then solve for x, okay? So again, the process to find the x and y intercept is the same no matter what the function is, okay? And in this case, it helps, it works really nice. Um, it works very well for linear functions because you only need two points. And once you have those two points, you can draw a line through those two points. All right. Okay. Okay, so sometimes we're given, sometimes uh, we're given a graph and we want to come up with the equation for that graph. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at this example. Okay. We want to write the equation of write the equation of the function. And we're so we're given graph. 
that. All right, so we are given uh, this point okay, on the y-axis, which is at two. And we're also given uh, this value over here. I'm going to draw this with a straight edge. Okay, so this is, right, so we're given this information. Okay? So we're given that this, right, this is at, uh, okay, so this is at zero comma two, okay? And this is going to be the point four five. And so the idea is that we want to come up with the equation. In other words, the, we want to come up with a function that does this. Okay, so that means we need to use this information here. Okay, so remember for a line, it consists of two things, right? The slope and, and a point. All right, so we have our, the point being the y-intercept, right? So we have our, uh, we have our y-intercept here, okay? That's given as zero comma two. We have that. Okay. All right, so the next thing we need is, we need, obviously we need the slope, okay? And remember, there's a formula for that. Okay. That we discussed last time. So it's the difference, remember the difference in y divided by the difference in x. Okay. So we just, right? So this is the slope, okay, given two points. But we do have two points. We do, we're definitely given two points here. We're given this point and this point. So let's go ahead and apply that um, to here. Okay. So I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call this one x1, y1. I'm going to call this one x2, y2. Okay. Okay, so x1, y1, x2, y2. And then we can apply our formula here. So we have y2, which is 5, 5 minus 2. So y2 is 5, y1 is 2, divided by x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 0. So, okay, we're going to end up getting 5 minus 2, which is 3, all divided by 4. So that's our slope, okay? In fact, we can see that geometrically, right? Right, this is another way, so actually another way to do this or to come up with a slope is to look here, right? So, we, so the difference, right? So the difference between two and five, in other words, five minus two is going to be three. So that's the rise. And then we go over from here to here, right? We're going over four units. So that's the rise, which is three, okay? okay this is three and then this is four. So, right, so up three over four. Okay, so that's that's geometrically what's happening here. Right? Okay, so in any case, we have our slope and we have our right intercept. So we're pretty much done. We just need to plug everything into here. Right? So our equation for this line is going to be three fourths. Right, that's our slope. Okay, times x plus b, b being two. Okay. And there it is. Okay. There's our, right? There's the solution that we wanted. Okay. And you can check your result. If you plug in zero comma two, right? We know that, okay, zero, right? Zero times this is going to be zero. And we do indeed get two. 
you plug in four here, right? Three fourths times four, while well, the fourth cancel out, and you get three plus two, which gives us five. So kind of a quick way to check a result there. Okay, there it is. So again, if you're given, right? So you're given the point intercept and you're given a point on line. So you can always figure out what the equation of that line is. Okay. All right. Um, Take a look, let's take a look at some special cases here, particularly the uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines. Okay, let's take a look at horizontal lines first. So if we have something like this, I'm just drawing the Cartesian plane, and let's assume that we have our horizontal line like this. I'm going to call that that's zero comma c. Okay, so we have something like this. All right, so the, the, the equation for that is basically just y equals to c, where and c is the value, right? That's the that's the corresponding value where it's crossing the y the y axis. Okay, so c could be positive or negative depending on uh, depending on where this line is intersecting the y axis. So if if it's above the x-axis, C is positive. If, um, if the line is intersecting below the x-axis, C is negative, okay? And the slope of this line turns out to be zero. And we can, if we, we can actually take a look at this. If you write it this way, right? We can write it as y equals zero x plus C. So that tells us that the slope must be zero. Okay, so to illustrate this, right, to give you a more, I guess, sort of concrete example, um, let's pick a couple points on here. With that, I want to show you that the slope is zero. Okay, so let's call this, let's say two, and over here, let's call that five. So that means right here, we have two comma C, and then this is going to be five comma C. Okay, so, three, so two, two being the input, C is going to be the output, okay, because that's what we have here, right? And when five is the input, C is still going to be the output. So the point is that no matter what the X value is, uh, C will always be the output because it gets canceled out by the zero here. So if we take our, if we check, right, if we apply our, so, our slope formula, we're going to get this. So I'm going to call again. I'm going to call this call this x1, y1. And I'll call this x2 and y2. Okay. So we have y2 minus y1. So this one minus this, on the bottom here, we have x2 minus x1, so 5 minus 2. So this gives you another way, another, right, another way to show you uh, or provides you another reason why the slope is 0. Okay? For any two points you pick um, for this line, the slope is always going to be 0. So for horizontal lines, it's always y equals to some constant. Whatever it's, whatever the um, intersection is, right? Whatever it's intersecting the y-axis. Okay. All right. So let's look at vertical lines. Okay. So vertical lines. Let's say we have this.
And that's, so this right here is going to be, we're going to call that uh, C, right? So this is the X intercept, so C comma zero. So that's where our line is intersecting the X axis, right? So, all right, so the, the, general, uh, the general form for a vertical line looks like this. Basically just X equals to C, okay? So C being the X intercept. And the slope, okay, uh, the slope of those is actually undefined. Slope is undefined. So why is why is that? Let's so let's take a careful look. So I'm gonna call this, you know, say this is let's say this we have two here and five. So this point is going to be c comma two. This point is going to be c comma five. And so we're going to apply our, we're going to apply this formula, slope formula to these two points. I'm going to call this the x2, y2, and I'll call this x1, y2, or sorry, y1. So we have slope equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So taking the difference, so we have y2 minus y1, so it's going to be 5 minus 2. And then what happens on the bottom, you get x, you have x2 minus x1. We get 3 over 0. So 3 over 0, that's undefined. Okay. All right, so a couple of things to remember here. For horizontal lines, it's always y equals to whatever the constant is, whatever the, so to, figure, to find that constant, you have to look at where the y-intercept is. Okay. Okay. y equals c. And then for vertical lines, it's going to be x equal to c, where c is going to be where the line intersects the x-axis. Okay. And the slope for horizontal lines is zero. Slope for vertical lines is undefined. Okay. So, all right. Okay, let's take a careful look at parallel and perpendicular lines. All right. Okay, let's say we have, uh, or let's say we have a line, let's call it L1. So let L1 be a, be a line uh, with some slope. Let's call that M1. And then let's look at another line. So let L2 be a line with a slope of M2. Okay. All right, so here's the condition for two lines to be parallel. Right. So if L1 is parallel, so that means, right, so that means parallel, okay? If L1 is parallel to L2, okay, then this implies, okay, so it's going to imply 
um, that the two slopes are equal. Okay, and provided that uh, these are not provided that these are not vertical lines, because as you know, vertical lines have un have um, undefined slope. Okay. So. So, and this works both ways. So if the two lines are parallel, that means their slopes are the same. If the two slopes are the same, that means they're parallel. All right, um, so L2 is perpendicular, sorry, L1 is perpendicular to L2, then this implies that the two slopes, when you multiply the two slopes, uh, the product of the two slopes will be minus one. Uh, this is also the same, right? We can also uh, we can also state this as m one. The slope of them, right? the slope of m one is equal to minus one over m two. So in other words, the the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So, okay. and that's true for for, for both. Okay. And this is provided the fact that uh, M1 and M2 are not, are not equal to zero. Okay. Because you can also solve for M2 in this way. So both of these, right? Both of these are the same conditions, okay? So to solve for M1 from to get to solve for M1 and then solve for M2. Okay. So these are various ways you can bear. These are various ways uh, that you can determine whether the two lines are perpendicular or not to each other. Okay. And what I mean by perpendicular, okay, that just means um, that where the two lines form a 90 degree angle. Okay. Okay, so. So for parallel lines, right, have something like this. That'll be for the like the parallel case, right? So they have the same slope, right? So no matter no matter what the orientation is, right? They're always right parallel. Lines, they don't intersect each other, so they have the same slope. And then for per perpendicular lines, right? Form a 90 degree angle. Okay. All right. So let's look at it. Uh, let's look at some examples of this. So let's suppose we want to find the equation of a line perpendicular to this function. Okay, All right, so we want to find the equation of a line perpendicular to this line that passes through this given point. Okay, so we have to go back to this, right? We have to utilize this formula here, this the equation of a line. So we are given the point, right? We're given the point on the line that we're trying to find, okay? And so, we're, and, but the thing is, we want to find the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this one. Okay, so first thing is we need to figure out the slope of this line. The slope of that line is going to be minus two, right? 
So think of this as this is just y equals to mx plus b. So, so minus two is our slope. Okay. Right. So we want to find the equation of the line perpendicular to that. So now we got to figure out the slope for our new line. New line being the one that we want to find, right? The one that we're trying to figure out here. Okay, so since the slope, since the requirement, right, uh, is uh, we want the new line to be perpendicular to this one. So we know that the slope of this line is minus two. So the new line, right, to get the slope for the new line, we go back to this piece, okay? So, right, so that means, okay, the slope that we need is going to be the negative reciprocal. So you take the reciprocal, okay, reciprocal of this, and then take the negative, take the negative of that value. So it's going to be one half. Okay, so that's the slope. This is the right. So this is the value that we want. So when we multiply those, notice that we get minus two times one half. That gives us negative one. Okay. So again, how do we get this? Well, we take the neg we take the reciprocal. And then take the negative of that. So we take we call that the negative reciprocal. Okay, that's what this that's what these formulas are saying. Okay, all right. So we take okay. So this is what we want to use. So now we have our slope. Okay, the other and we're also given the point. Okay, the line that we're trying to find it has to go through that coordinate. So we have everything. Okay. All right, so so the line, right? Okay, so we have y equals to mx plus b. This is going to be one half x plus b. So using our new slope value. And now to solve for b, we just need to plug in x and y, what okay. we're given here. Okay, so we plug those into here. Okay, so when y is, so when sorry, when x is negative four, y is negative one. So we're going to get minus one okay, equals to one half times negative four plus b. So we get minus one equals to negative two plus b. All for b, and therefore we get negative one plus two means that b has to be one. Okay, so our equation is this. We have y equals two, one half x plus one. So there's our solution, okay? Right. Okay, so again, the way we did this, right, we want to find, so the goal is to find the equation of a line perpendicular to this one. At the same time that we want that line to pass through this given point. So first we got to figure out the new slope value. We got to figure out, in other words, we got to figure out the slope of our new, of our, uh, the new, of the new line, for the new line, okay? So we, we have our slope, okay? We take the negative reciprocal of this, right? So you take, put it, right? Okay, put it over one and then take the negative of that. So we get one half. And then we plug it into here, right? And then you plug in your X and Y, okay? Plug in Y, plug in X and solve for B. And that's our equation. Okay? That's our equation for the new line. Okay, so so this line, if you plot this line and this line, you can see that they're perpendicular to each other. Okay, in other words, they form a ninety degree angle. All right, let's go over another example. Here. Okay. 
So let's say a line passes through these points. Okay, so we have a line that passes through those two coordinates. And we want to find want to find the equation equation of a perpendicular. Perpendicular line. passes to this point. All right, so this problem, this example involves a little bit more work than the example over here, right? Remember over here, we're given the actual line, right? And then we can easily figure out the slope. But over here, uh, we're, not given the, we're not given the equation for the line, okay? So how are we going to get our slope? What we do, so what, we, what we're gonna do is, uh, we ha we do know that the line passes through these two points, okay? So we can fit, we can calculate the slope from these two points, and then um, and then just like over here, we take the negative reciprocal of that slope to get to get the slope for the for the new line, and then we have our coordinate here. Okay, so let's go through that. Okay, so we're given a line that passes through these two coordinates. Okay, so remember that the slope is this, so it's a change in y over the change in x. I want to call this, this is x1, call this y1, this one I'll call y2, sorry, x2 and y2. So we can calculate the slope of this line that goes to these two points. So we have five minus six, five minus six divided by four minus negative two. So be careful here, right? It's four minus negative two. So don't forget the don't forget that uh, the parentheses here. Okay? They're gonna get minus one over six. Okay, so for four minus negative two is four plus two, which is six. So that's okay. So that gives us our slope of the of the line of the line of this line here. Okay? All right. Okay, so, but we want to find the equation of a perpendicular line. What we need. That's going to this coordinate. Okay. So we take, again, so what we're going to do is take the negative reciprocal of this. Okay. Right, so the negative reciprocal, I'll just go ahead and write that out. Okay, I'll just write it this way. I'll take the negative. So we're going to take the negative of this and then reciprocal. So that's going to be one six. Okay, and then we take its reciprocal. So that's going to be six. So that's that's what we want. Okay, we want to use this one. So again, we take one over this one over one six is six, and then we take its and then take the negative value. Okay, so it's six. Again, that's applying this, using this formula here. Okay, so we want that line to be perpendicular. Okay, so when we multiply these, you can see that they get uh, one minus one six times six is negative one. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and figure out our equation for that line. Okay. So let's do that over here. So there's our equation of the line, okay? And then we have our point, okay? 
we want our equation, right? We want our equation of the line to go through this point. Okay, so we have this so far. So y equals to six x plus b, okay? Using this slope here, okay? And then we're gonna plug in four and five. So y being five, x being four. But we're gonna get, okay, so this is just, Five equals to 24 plus B. So we're going to get five minus 24, which gives us negative 19. Okay. And there's our solution. Okay. So we have Y equals to 6X minus 19. All right, there it is. Okay. So again, sometimes we have to utilize, sometimes we have to utilize uh, certain formulas in math, right? So we're given, we are given that the lot, we are given the two points at which those, at which that line goes through, okay, these two points. And then we have to recall this, right, this, okay, this slope formula. And that way we can use, right, we can plug in the information, we get our slope, but then we want the line that's perpendicular to this line. So we take the negative reciprocal. Okay, so you take the reciprocal of this and then take the negative of that. So you can easily check your result. Just take this slope and this one and multiply and see if you get negative one. If you don't get negative one, that means there's, there was a mistake somewhere. Okay, so we got six. Plug it back into here, all right? And then we want our, we want the equation of line to go through this coordinate, okay? So we plug in four, plug in five, and then we can solve for B. So now we get Y equals six X minus nine. Right. Okay, last topic here is uh, finding the point of intersection of two lines. So the idea here is that um, given the equation of two lines, how do we figure out the point of the intersection? Okay, so I'm going to illustrate this through this example here. So actually, so let me draw this part first. So the idea is this. So let's say we have Okay, let's say we have a line right, that looks like this. And then let's say we have another line. Uh, let's see. Let's say it looks like this one. So for given two lines, right, there is a technique we can use to figure out the point of intersection, the point of intersection. Okay, so for X, for the input of X, the point of intersection is where the, the two lines have the same output Y. So that sort of gives us uh, a way to, uh, to solve this kind of problem. Okay, so let's look at an example of this.
So let's say that's our, we have this line and then we have another line. Okay, so we have H of T equals to three T minus four and J of T equals to five minus T. So we wanna figure out the point of intersection. Okay, so again, going back to this idea, right? You have for this input of X, the two lines intersect right here, which means that they have the same output lines. Or sorry, sorry aim, same output value, okay? namely being Y. So what we can do here is we can, so the idea is that we can take these two and set them equal to each other, right? And that way, it, so we force, right? We're forcing them to have the same output and then we can figure out, okay, what is, what's the T value that will give us the same output? Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna take three T minus four, set it equal to five minus T. Okay, okay so solving for T, right? You're going to, Going to add t to both sides, okay, 3t plus t, and then add 4 to both sides. Okay, and so we end up getting 4t equals to 9. And so t is going to be equal to 9 fourths. There's our Right, so there's the there's the t value. Okay, that's our that's our input value. Now we got to figure out what the output value is, and so we can either plug that back into here or here. Okay, so we found t. Okay, so we can either we can either evaluate h of nine fourths or j of nine fourths. Doesn't matter. So I'll just use the first one. So we have H of H of nine fourths, that T B equal to nine fourths. Okay, so that's going to give us uh, 27 over four minus four. So that's the same as 24, point, sorry, 27 over four minus, this is 16 over four. Okay. Right. And so that's going to give us 11 fourths. Okay. Okay. So that's our coordinate. All right. This tells us that when T is 9 fourths, the output value is 11 fourths. So that's our point of intersection. Okay. Like I said, we could have also substituted in for, the, um, for J. And let's, let's try that. Just to verify this. Let's see, let's do that over here. J of nine fourths. We have five minus nine over four. So five, so we want to get a common denominator just like we did here. So we're going to, five becomes 20 over four. And we get 20 minus 9, which is 11. Okay. And divide by 4. And we, right, so we get the same value as expected. Okay, so, all right, so the answer, so this is the solution. Okay. That's what we want. Okay. So that's our point of intersection. Okay. Um, so, by the way, this is what's called a, um, so this is what's called a system of two equations. Okay. So, Another way to express the system uh, is to write like this. And I'll just use it in terms of X and Y. So all I did here is just use Y and X instead, where X is the independent variable. So you have y equals 3x minus 4, and then the other one you have uh, minus x okay, plus 5. So, right? So solving something like this is, is the is uh, the way it's done like this. OK? 
Okay. So you basically set them, you set the expressions equal to each other and then solve for the common variable. Okay, once you solve for X, then you substitute back into one of these and then solve for Y. So we're gonna, so um, in another lesson, uh, we're going to talk about how to solve a, um, a linear, this is what's called linear system. So we're gonna talk about other ways to solve this. So for the time being, um, this, is the, this is the way that we're going to approach these, okay? Mainly just to set the two functions equal to each other, okay, and then um, and then find the uh, solve for the common variable. Solve for the um, find the uh, value for the for the input value, and then once we get the input value, then you plug it back into here or here and figure out the output value. All right, so I think that's that's all for this section. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll see y'all later.